Hey, welcome back to 312, the HRP podcast. We are here with the year in review episode, as always, at the end of the year. And we are joined by the president and COO, the CEO, and the CFO of the company. We are here with Dan Titus, right. CEO, Tad Gutchis, hello, president and COO, and the CFO, Joe Cardinale. President. He's here too. And we are talking to you today about how the year went for HRP. And I think it's safe to say that it was a very good year for HRP. And we're all pretty happy with how things went. It was a very good year. It was the year that we finally exited the gosh dang pandemic and kind of got back to uh, regular footing and could sort of operate the business the way that we would have liked to have operated the business during the pandemic. Of course, that wasn't a thing. So it was like our first... Um, clean unobstructed year <laughs> in in a long time yeah so it was a, it was a very good year all things in balance yeah un- unobstructed is definitely a good uh phrase to use because there was the last two years there was a lot of bumps on the road but uh we were able to keep the uh momentum going in a lot of different areas um across the uh, company the different pillars do you each have a moment that kind of epitomizes uh how the year went oh wow a moment so many, Tom. So many. Um, I guess, when did you first know it was going to be a good year for HRP? When, when did it be like, okay, I'm feeling confident. I feel like this is actually going to go the way that we think it's going to go. Um, I'll say for me that it was kind of exiting the first quarter because we had mm-hmm. a really good first quarter. And um, even though we had a really good first quarter, our backlog was also really strong. Uh-huh. And those two things don't always live together like you would like them to live together. Sometimes we have a really strong first quarter, but backlog is weak or vice versa. So those two things, um, both, uh, you know, performing above expectations and being above par to me suggested that absent some, you know, major world catastrophe that we were, we were on pace for a pretty good year. Mm. Joe. Um, for me, it's around the same, uh, time, but it, uh, it would be more that it was um, like the backlog, but the, the jobs that were starting to be awarded were a lot more significant. It That's had some, some weight to them that, that we haven't had in a while, like the Wampus site and, and the English station getting set up. Granted, it hasn't been done, but you know <laughs> it's, it's out there. It's a signed mm-hmm. contract. So um, those are the type of things that really turned it around for me as well in, around the same time frame right after the, exiting the first quarter. Ted, how about you? Yeah, I was going to say uh, it was probably like May for me as we were getting ready for our second quarter update meeting for the company, and it was two things. And uh, Dan was giving reports all the time about backlog, and it kept on going up. <laughs> and we were working really hard, and it kept on going up. But the other thing, too, was uh, when we started approaching 23, 24 hires in about May, which actually set – company records for the most hires in any year. And we weren't even halfway through the year. Um, that's when it was really like, whoa, this thing is exploding. Mm. Um, and everybody was really hitting on all cylinders. And, and it was, there seemed to be no impediments, you know. Uh, that's that's when it really was uh, a good sign for me. Yeah, you know, I would sort of add to, like, th- th- that's such a hard question to answer. Not so much like, when did you know, but like, the first question you asked was what, like, what's your, your sort of like quintessential memory of this great year. And there's like so many things that have happened along the way, good things and a few difficult things, but um, it's, it's actually like the, the, the sum total of it. And it's sort of hard to articulate this, but like we have been really busy all year, right. At every level in the company, every department, every, every discipline, everybody has been really busy. And it's like, um, it's a feeling that you have. It's quality busy. Like it's not, you know, people, I don't know, sharpening the pencils in their desk <laughs> kind of busy, you <laughs> busy, know, like busy it, for a short amount of time. And then, yeah. Flashy, busy, like yeah. busy for a week and then nothing to do for three weeks kind of thing. Like ev- every week when we look at the time utilization reports, it was quality every week. Bang, bang, bang. And um, it, still is. The, it still is. Yeah. And the offices have been relatively vacant because people are out and about doing stuff like it's it's more of like a like an overall feel like it just it felt different 
this year than it has felt in a lot of years. And it felt like it used to when we were cranking. I mean, we've hired a couple of employees that you still don't see in the office at all anymore. That's true. You That's know, true. It's still, yeah, we know they're on the roster. And yeah, you they're know in they're, the computer <laughs> system. But you know the, they're there, and yeah. they're doing their timesheets and, and all that, and they're getting paid, but have not seen them in the office uh, like practically at all. Yeah, yeah, I like the standard joke when you see those people every now and then. You introduce yourself. Hi, have I met you before? Um, yeah, Dan's right, though, the, the feel. Um, and I look back, you know, preparing for the annual meeting uh, here in a couple days, and you look at the employees who have made a difference. And you, I looked at the roster, and I was like, darn, there are some people who, frankly, I said, geez, I thought they'd been here two, three years. What do you mean they've been here since February? And the impact they made. Um, a lot of folks in the New York office immediately jumping on some big projects. But uh, really, every, every office has, has added some and adjusted some really uh, good staff. And uh, I was, we're out with 34 employees. And um, that we added, and like even the interns made a difference too, as well, mm-hmm. yeah, which I mean, was pretty neat. Funny, like uh, Matt Wuchek just on my LinkedIn, you know, you've been working for a year, like a year Ex- yeah. exactly. I mean, I knew him before and I know him, you know, outside of work too. And I'm like, geez, it's only been a year that he's been here, it's yeah. crazy, yeah. So, I, you know, for me, actually, now that you're sort of keying on that, that and this isn't like a memory, but for me, I think that the 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 most notable thing of all of the notable things this year for me um, is actually the the employee profile. So, you know, you hear in the news and everything about the quiet quitting and the, you know, the not wanting to go back to work and like just all of the, the icky narratives that are coming out of the, out of, you know, the post pandemic work life balance era. And, you know, I think that 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 this company has done amazing. Like we just, I tell people this all the time when I'm out and about on the street. We just don't really have those problems. We really don't. Everybody here, whether they started two weeks ago or they've been here for thirty some odd years, everybody's working hard, pulling their weight, engaged in what they do. The atmosphere is good. You know, people are happy. You know, everybody seems like they you know, it's work, but in relative terms, you know, are enjoying what they do. Like the, 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 the company is functioning because of the staff, the functioning, the company is functioning at a very high level and it's almost effortless when it functions like that. Like people are just doing it. You know what I mean? And I, you know, talking to other people, like I said, out on the street, I just keep hearing these stories about all these terrible employee situations and just all of the consternation and the, the struggle between the corporate corporate space and the employee space and all the stuff that you see in the headline news. And like, we haven't had that, that like, that's not our story this year. Our story is the opposite of that. For me, that's probably the, the, de- the defining attribute of the year, which is not something you can measure in a metric or on a piece of paper or anything. It's much more esoteric. It's more of a, you know, it's a feeling. I, I completely agree with you that, that this year, and especially now that, that, that staff profile is, is completely different. But I mean, I guess if there was uh, some bumps in the road, I think that early in the year we did have some of those. Well, yeah, but this is the year in review, Joe. <laughs> I understand. So, so it's I, the whole year. Yeah, but I, I first of all, I think you've that, been audited, Dan. Thank yeah. you. I, I think that that um, I think that that perspective is narrow to the Connecticut office. Yeah, oh, um, you know, I mean, like if you look at the New York office, the New York office has had that uh, level of staff quality for a couple of years now. So um, I'm looking at it more from you know 100,000 feet. Yes, every organization of our size and our age is going to have a few bumps and a few warts and a few scars and a few places where we have some folks that are you know, let's just say not well aligned with the sort of the company ethos. And, you know, those can create some difficult management situations. But on balance, we're not struggling with those issues the yeah. way that others are. Well, I, you know, when you talk about that turnover, I think it's probably more of a, a wrap around fourth quarter 2021, first quarter 2022. But when, Dan, you mentioned, like, we've been busy, and I go back and you look at it, we were also busy with um, Oktoberfest, the summer alumni picnic, uh, game nights, yeah. mm-hmm. payday barbecues, those were all, those all came back. Um, you know, we brought back the education program where people could go to uh, grad school, masters, things like that. Still kept up all the registrations, things like that. So that was all full bore. In addition to going out and drilling a hole, doing a permit, 
doing some civil construction. Um, That's a good point. There was a lot of things that were going on. Uh, charity runs, charity fundraisers, Plays philanthropic stuff blew yeah. out of the water. Mm-hmm. Um, so people were busy kind of soup to nuts, really. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the culture definitely came back mm-hmm. after two uh, two years of uh, pause anyways. I've got a pretty limited experience or knowledge of this area, so tell me if I, if I got this wrong, but it seems like the turnover that we did experience wasn't that extreme or out of the ordinary for a company. I think it kind of, we felt it maybe a little more because of how close we are at HRP and how much of kind of a family hmm. it is here, that when yeah. people do leave in any kind of number, it, it it's something that we all kind of take a hit on yeah it, um that's a good point tom that's something that has always been a curiosity to me you know um and I, at some level this kind of gets to the alumni association which is tangential but sort of supports this point but um we sort of have like this cooked in idea that like you know people who come to hrp state hrp forever like there's like sort of this narrative and objectively that's just not true and it never has been true you know, um, you know, you like look at where we are in terms of employee numbers or whatnot. And it, frankly, you, you look at where we are, you know, with the alumni associate association, the alumni association actually has more members than the company currently has employees, which sort of in stark terms underscores the fact that no, not everybody stays. Lots of people leave. Um, and I, you know, that's to be expected. Some of the departures are, uh, mutual, <laughs> Some of them are because, you know, people, you know, have family situations or, you know, run across other better opportunities at an individual level and, and what have you. Um, so I think, you know, that's just kind of part of the, the game that we play. Um, I think maybe because of the pandemic and and trying to keep everybody employed, which, you know, we accomplished, but um, trying to keep everything tight and under wraps. Like we tried to keep everybody here for that purpose. And so I think that maybe that um, sort of created or amplified that, that narrative that nobody leaves. But then as started, as soon as the pandemic started to release its grip on everybody and things started to sort of drift back towards the normal, you know, there were some people who were, you know, not satisfied with their, their position, their status, you know, maybe just, I mean, we've, we've had some employees go who have completely changed careers, decided that, you know, this wasn't a thing for them, which again has always been true historically, but it, I think it just hit harder because it was after the pandemic and we were all struggling so hard not to lose anybody. And then as we sort of transitioned back to some sense of normalcy, like that sort of regular progression of people coming and going such as it is, started to happen like it used to. Yeah, Tom, I think you're pretty astute with your statement. And the reason why I say that is I was in a uh, some A&E peer groups and like uh, architects, engineers uh, throughout the country. And the numbers actually, their numbers are about the same, if not maybe a little bit worse than ours. I would say if you went 19, 20, 21, it was always a one, usually a one-to-one ratio. Gain 14 people, lose 16 people, that type of thing. I think we're now probably at the two to two and a half to one range as far as adding two, you know, for every two people, we're doing one. Um, but from what I saw, and we're talking California, Arizona, Seattle, Boston, these folks come all over. And we talked about that, and they said, you know, hey, I added 42 people. I added 56 people. Well, we lost 33. So I like Dan says, I think it, it is kind of a normal thing now, and uh, it's what it is. But you also hit something on the head because we're smaller we're tighter and we go to battle. Yeah. It seems like it's worse because you worked on that proposal. you worked on that project. Hey, remember that field trip we did and two days full of testing, you got a tighter relationship. So mm-hmm. it's the cultural part to us. So I think you made a pretty good uh, astute statement there. Thanks. Joe, do you have anything nice to say about me as well? <laughs> <laughs> go figures. Good try though. <laughs> Thought it would be cool for each of you to shout out maybe a new employee that came that was hired this year that made an impression on you and maybe an old employee has been here for a while that you think stepped up in some way. It's going to be tough because someone's going to say somebody and uh, take somebody's pick. Well, I think luckily we have uh, plenty of editing great employees well, to choose from. I'll, not, not I'll, I'll go <laughs> first if you want. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah. So I will go with uh, an employee who's been here for a while who has really stepped, stepped up 
who has really impressed me is, is Rich Cohan and mm-hmm. the operations. I think, you know, for lack of a better term, he exploded this year on the scene. And uh, what does he do? What office does he work out of and he, what's his role? You know, Rich is director of operations in uh, Connecticut and as a right-hand man to, to Jay Beach, and he really has jumped into all pillars of work. Geologist by trait, he understands business, um, but he understands his craft as well. But he jumped into engineering, um, where we had some things to look at, as well as EHS, but he's very good about sharing resources and responding, and um, it, it's awesome. And uh, we'll find out very soon at the uh, annual meeting that uh, he also became uh, – a shareholder this year because of those efforts. And, you know, the other one, if you talk mm-hmm. about uh, some of the rookies out there, mm-hmm. which it's very tough to pick one or two. Honestly, you'd almost want to go, let's draft three and go around, but I'll just go with one. Um, I got to, you know, because I was part of the recruitment, I'm going to go with Carly Sandin mm-hmm. um, because there was a two-year recruitment when she was a junior to be an intern and she didn't sign on with HRP and, she chose another uh, firm to go with um, in, in manufacturing, but we stayed in contact. But she really bought in. Uh, she bought in, honestly, to what you do mm-hmm. um, was really one of the things. She's like, what do you mean you guys have a YouTube channel and stuff like that? <laughs> I said, I know. Tell me about it. And I even said, uh, maybe we can document your whole career when you come on here and like kind of <laughs> like the office way. But uh, before she even came here, she recruited people. She recruited two people. One yeah. person did not take a position. Uh-huh. But the other one was Spencer, mm-hmm. who was another home run. So I just go back to say, who does that? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. those are my two picks uh, mm-hmm. to throw out of there. Nice, Dan. Who you got? Yeah, um, those are those are very good picks. They That's were, why I went they first. Were on my, they were, yeah. <laughs> good move. Good move. They, Sorry, <laughs> they were on my short list for sure. Um, I think um, I also think I would like to call out Pat Montori up in New York. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Um, he's been. Um, uh, a breath of fresh air. I'm listen. The whole New York office has been off the charts this year, but um, you know he probably doesn't even. He's probably not even aware that Tad and I have been sort of watching him from a distance. Um, so if he's listening to this, his eyebrows are probably crawling down over his head and down the back of his neck. But um, <laughs> he's a Giants fan, not a Bills fan. I always say Bills to him. Oh, he knows he's got <laughs> his eyebrows. So he's too polite about it, though. <laughs> but he uh, he has really uh, started to blossom um, into the senior role in in and clearly has the chops to move beyond that and has taken on a lot of personal responsibility. And, um, you know, he's doing quality work. I know that he's been very helpful to, to Jessica, um, you know, with the Jessica DEC. Kruzik? Yeah. Yeah. With the DEC contract. Um, so I'm, I'd have to put him on the list um, as a new employee. What are his duties in the New York office? Well, he works on the geo staff on the D- DEC contract. He's a, a senior staff person. So, um, you know, he's, it's like the it's the quintessential senior staff person position anywhere in this company. It's kind of like the jack of all trades that, you know, they're involved in, you know, helping train the new kids, but they're also still doing the work. And then they're sometimes doing their project managers, billing memos or handling the clients or, you know, whatever. They kind of um, they kind of do all the things. It's really an important pivot role in in our organization. And frankly, we have. Um, everyone that we have is great, and we'd always wish that we have more. But he, I think he's exemplary in that in that category right now. So, excellent, excellent, really good, outstanding pick. Yeah, um, who's your rookie of the year? I, I mean, he's not a rookie, but he's kind of a rookie at HRP, so he's kind of my kind of my rookie of the year. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of like senior staff, all right, I'm gonna say it. Mm-hmm. That's why I went first. I'm gonna say it. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Jesse's on. Um, and the reason I'm going to say, I'm going to say Jesse's on is, um, I, and also by the way, Taylor Kim mm, in, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Allison's group has almost kind of like the same archetype, same characteristic, just a home run, you know, working his butt off, getting all the things done. Um, two of them in New York office, they're, they're yeah. exceptional. And, and he actually is new this year. So just yeah. a qualify yeah. <laughs> and allison's group handles uh the air side of the engineering stuff yeah compliance engineering yeah. yeah um but but back to the to the old dog pick i, I it's for me it's going to be jesse um i think jesse um first of all he was on the board of directors this year in the minority shareholder position and i think that um he did a fantastic job in that position i think he tried to uh, make it, um, you know, air quotes, a real position. He asked hard questions. He acted um, independently. 
Um, you know, he didn't just, you know, go with the win one way or the other, you know, he, he, he was engaged outside of the board again, asking hard questions and saying, do we really need this or do you really think, you know, kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, in terms of the way that that office has grown and the way that the staff in that office has grown in terms of, you know, outside of the recruiting function, but in terms of the quality of the staff and the level of effort that they put in and the amount of time that they put in, you know, he leads that office. So, you know, the coach has got to get as much credit as the team that wins the championship. So mm. I, I think that his performance this year has been um, outstanding. Mm. Agreed. And you stole my guy because I was going to pick Jesse. Sorry. Um, Sorry, Joe. So I had to rethink. Um, so my rookie of the year, actually, I'm going to pick, pick Matt Uchek. That's Again, a good one, too. Yeah. So um, many. <laughs> that does. Yeah, there is a it, lot. Yeah, that's good. But I'm picking him. Uh, Matt is a senior project manager in Connecticut. Um, I'm picking him because, you know, he came from FUS, uh, where I came from, and it's a lot more difficult on PMs there than it is here. So he had a bit of a transition because we give him a little bit more breathing room here. But I, I feel like he's been one of our better senior project managers. Um he knows my lingo because I've come from that company and came here and brought a lot of that information here with me, a lot of the um, accrual processes and accounting processes. So he pretty much knows it right from the get go. So he was good to go with a lot of that stuff. And um, my employee that's been here a while, I think I'm going to pick Deb Berardi. Um, she has gotten through how many hires was it? 30 something? 34. 34, managing that department, um, being able to handle that, um, handling the new medical insurance that we've had to do. So I, I feel like we've uh, thrown a lot at her and, um, you know, we've turned the corner and came out of it pretty good. So what would each of you say to the employees um, of the company what advice would you give them going forward into the new year on how to make 2023 as successful and more successful than 2022 was? And uh, Dan, I'll start with you. Yeah. I mean, again, sort of going back to what I was saying before about how like the year just felt, uh, felt right. Busy, you know, sometimes stressful because of the, the busyness, but um, you know, this is a full contact, you know, profession. This is just, it, you know, this is not for everybody. Um, it requires a lot of, you know, personal time investment. It requires, um, you know, really being flexible. And sometimes that means, you know, having to, you know, give when you want to take and take when you want to give and, you know, all those sorts of things. But for the people who are able to figure out how to sort of strike a balance in this space, I think that's kind of the key. So, you know, everybody would sort of have to make this for their, you know, make this measurement on their own. But what I would say to people is just keep doing what you've been doing, right? Like this was a good year. You know, if there are some things where you felt frustrated with uh, the leadership or with the, the organization writ large or your manager or whatever, um, you know, let's pick a couple of things to work on this year to try to improve those those areas, make the edges a little less rough or what have you. Um, but in general, I think that, you know, if we can continue to operate the way that we've operated this year, and I feel like, you know, again, this is a full time contact sport. I think that some people probably get to the edge of burnt out once in a while. Tom Simmons might be a good example all the time that he puts in. Right. But maybe you've gotten better at kind of moving in and out of that. Right. Like there's times when you have to get something done. So you just do it. But then you sort of back off a little bit here and there and you and you, you take your spaces and you go to lunch and you get your coffees and, you know, you do all those sorts of things and you just kind of find your own personal balance in the space. I think that's my advice to people is that if you're going to do this and you're going to be at HRP and you enjoy this environment and the culture that we have here, you know, work on that. Work on trying to find the sweet spot where, you know, you're performing up to the expectations in a very difficult business, but you're also finding the personal space to, you know, feel good about what you're doing or, you know, have a little downtime or what have you and just work on that. It's a constant battle, by the way. 
Yep. I still fight that battle myself. So mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a constant battle. Joe? Uh, well, I, well, how am I going to follow what he just said? Talk about, like, <laughs> spending money. I got, I got, That's I, not an appropriate thing. I'm ready to roll. All right, go ahead. Uh, trust the system. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Absolutely trust the system because if you look back, and one of the things I said to Dan and Joe at the beginning of the year was when the plan profitability went in, 10%. When people bought into that, look what happened. Trusting the recruiting process, able to, to hire essentially, we got one month left, three people per month. The cycle to hire that many people doesn't happen that fast. Um, the marketing in the uh, BD meetings we have, um, the SDVOB uh, thought think tanks, trust in the system. You might not be comfortable in them, but they're there for a reason. Um, they reshaped the piece of PFOS forum with some new people and some new talent. Ideas are exploding on that. Trusting the system. A lot of people, including our, you'll see in the video that you're doing, Tom, for the 40th anniversary, maybe didn't buy into this whole social media stuff. Trust the system. Run with it. Look what happened. So there's a lot of things out there that, you know, you kind of got a concept, but Dan, you know, also made a good point where, but put your individualism into it, speak your mind, but there is a place for you to trust the system and to make it work. Um, so my advice, you know, like Dan said, you know, about the culture and, and how we're doing here and doing the same thing, um, The you know, it's never a perfect company scenario. No uh, process, all that. I think one thing that employees could do to improve is ask questions, you know, get engaged with your managers, get engaged with um, us, you know, yes, my door is closed a lot, but that's more probably because I'm watching sports or something. I was going to say, not, cause you're watching <laughs> not because I don't want anybody to come in. Um, anytime I, I love answering questions. Um, for the most part, I don't get too many of the, Technical questions because I don't know what we do, but I think what what employees can do to improve and um, get more and what we can get more out of employees is, you know, ask questions, uh, have ideas. Um, There's been plenty of ideas that have come from employees that have helped us generate, you know, procedures and processes, you know, that so if they don't speak up, we don't know. And if we don't know then nothing's going to change. So if there's things like that, they've got to be able to communicate with us. Yep. Good point. Any final thoughts before I wrap up for the work hard segment? Well, I think um, Joe and Ted both just made good points. Trust the system and, and speak up, you know, and sort of going all the way back to the point I was making, like trying to find trying to find yourself in this and be able to strike the balance. I think all three of those things sort of talk to each other a little bit, you know. Listen, again, like I said at the beginning, you know, this is sort of a full contact sport. Consulting is is rough. It's like being a lawyer. Like it's it's rough sometimes. It's it's a lot of hours sometimes. It's trying to serve a lot of masters and sometimes unreasonable exp- uh, clients, sometimes unreasonable managers, you know, all of the things. But you know, part of the point, part of the, the idea here at HRP is is to make all of that work-related stuff more tolerable by putting it into a space and an environment where you have opportunities to kind of do what you want to do and stretch your legs a little bit and get involved in stuff. And, you know, I think in a lot of ways, now that I'm sort of saying it out loud, Tad keyed on it before, you know, all the, the social events, the charity events, the stuff coming back. There are so many opportunities here at HRP through digital media production, getting involved in this stuff or, you know, getting more involved in the, in the charity events or getting on the party planning commission or, you know, being somebody that helps, you know, facilitate the alumni club. There are so many different ways to get involved with the company. That's not just about collecting data and writing reports. Um, and those are the spaces I think where you can kind of, you can sort of overlap those two things, the personal expressive part, and then, you know, the work part. And, and I think that the company does, obviously I'm a little biased, but I think the company does a massively better job than most others out there that I'm aware of at creating these little niche spaces where people can kind of, you know, do it their way. 
and and have some of their own personality at work and have some of their own you know uh, uh, interests expressed at work and so you know just taking all three of our comments and pushing that forward like that's it that's that's at a lot of levels that's how you succeed at hrp you know you do the work hard part and you pour yourself into it but you can pour yourself into it the way you want to do it well everybody thank you for joining us for this work hard segment uh the four of us are going to take a quick break and come back for the play hard segment and we will see you over there and as always play hard is a video segment so if you're listening to us don't forget to hop onto our youtube channel and check us out there to uh see the new studio arrangement we've got all right folks see you in a bit Hey everybody, welcome to the Play Hard section. We are back for the uh, year-end podcast. What's everybody drinking? I went old school, Tom. <laughs> in, uh, in homage, I went Miller Lite. Yeah. And there's there's purpose behind this. Mm-hmm. This is the, uh, the, the college beer of choice, and it's a shout-out to some clients of ours. Okay. Believe yep. it or not. Anheuser-Busch? Uh, no, no. Actually, people who, uh, this was their chosen, chosen really? beverage. Over, over Bush Light. I was going to say, Bush my Light. my college was Bush or Bush. It was, uh, Natty Bush. Ice. Natty Ice. Right. It was, um, mm-hmm. Like that? That was the, the Lehigh Valley of Pennsylvania. There was a bar uh, out by Yukon in, I think it's technically Eagleville, and it was called Hooligans, which- God bless- Oh my God! They changed the name. <laughs> it's been changed a few times, many, many times. But it will always be known to me as hooligans. Absolutely, and I hooligans, know exactly the you're hooligans, about. absolutely, one hundred percent is the name that fit that bar. Like it was that place. <laughs> absolutely, they had dollar twenty five pitchers and natty light for years, and we would go there. Yeah, yeah, we had yes. nickel night at some of these places. Oh yeah, yeah. I had a friend in college who was one of those people that could like just open his throat right like oh, like inhale. and take like a pitcher of beer and like swallow it in like two gulps yeah mm-hmm. right and, and like we would time him like he'd get like a whole pitcher down like in 10 seconds right so we'd actually go to hooligans and you know play pool and listen to the music and chase girls around and do all the stuff that young men do but every once in a while we would get into a a, a you know a bet on pitcher drinking and jeff would crush everybody always we may, we actually would make like the next weekend's drinking money off his drinking mm. absolutely <laughs> yeah we had we had a guy uh that i went to school with just like that michael bucci it was just ridiculous and it was so awestruck he'd be at a party you know eight o'clock hey do it again do it again he was incapacitated by nine thirty. his night of relaxation ended because he had to go home because everybody wanted to see what was going on Hey, Booch, do it again. Hey, Booch, do it again. It's pretty crazy. I Like, I don't know. Like, I, I still have vivid memories of it. Like, you know, like a whole pitcher. And, like, I don't even know how, like, like from, like, a fire hose perspective, how he could get that volume down <laughs> mm-hmm. his esophagus that mm-hmm. quickly. Mm-hmm. Like, yep. always I mean, impressed by those people. Yep, crazy. they are. Mm-hmm. They are. And just to round out, I'm the fancy guy. I drink whiskey. It, dirty glass or clean? Mm-hmm. It is clean, brand new. Okay. Actually, right. just, just got it. Yeah. Couldn't even get a dirty glass. I yeah, I'm fancy. I clean my glasses. A dirty like whiskey Dan's, grass. Dan's glass. I was laughing though. As soon as you said Eagleville, I was like smiling from ear to ear. Going, <laughs> <"Ooh>, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what it was. Schmedley's. That's the name of the after Schmedley's. Who, who it was called Schmedley's. Yeah, and then it was uh, something else. The the, the stone wall, and yeah. now it's something else altogether. But it's never it's never been anything other than hooligans. Yeah. For me, Damn it's it. always been Schmedley's. That's the only one I knew. So one of the things that we did not talk about in the work hard segment, but that kind of fits in well here, is that this is the 40th anniversary of HRP. Woo! How long have each of you been here? <laughs> Starting from shortest. Well, the shortest. Yeah. I take offense to that. but That was a completely yeah, coincidence. Sure, sure it was. Um, um, I'm on nine. I think I'm on nine. You're on nine years. That's yeah. right, yeah. Yeah, nine. Mm-hmm. Dan, how long have you been here? 25. And Tad? 34. Wow. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> that's when you go. <laughs> 34. 
34 years. You started when I did. But I'm Alive. Like, yeah, yeah. In, in life. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, actually, it's, you know, it's funny you mentioned that, Tom. I was thinking about that. Well, I don't want to, you know, I was thinking about some things I was going to say in our uh, party, and I, I, I had that question for you because I remember when you were born. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for you, Tom. Yeah. So you're doing all the, the cuts on on the super secret video. Mm-hmm. It's not really secret, but yeah. nobody nobody else has seen it. It will be out be- um, before this comes out. So we can talk about it as much as we want here okay. without giving anything away. So how's it coming together? Um, Some people, <clears throat> they're pretty, pretty much everything they said is going to make the cut, and then some people are going to lose about 70% of it. <laughs> Well, you captured a lot of material. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah, we were able to talk to virtually every single person uh, in the former top leadership of the company, which was great, too, because there was a couple people I had never met before um, who were absolutely wonderful to talk to. Yeah. yeah. The feedback was great, too. They actually, oh, good. That, it's mutual back to you who, as well. Who stands out? Uh, now, Bob, you don't have to say why, but who stands well, Bob out? Bob Leach, for Bob sure. Leach, yeah, yeah. yeah. You go, could go when figure. you when you talk to him, and the video will be out too. So if anyone watching this wants to take a look at that, you can head over to. It'll be the last video that came out on our YouTube channel and see kind of what we're talking about here. But uh, Bob Leach, former CEO of the company, COO, CEO of the company, yeah. and CFO. I think he did the double role. That's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you talk to him, you could tell how invested he was in his time here, how much he cared about the company and the people that worked here, mm-hmm. and it just really um, there was a real. Uh, you know, sense of care for the company, for its future, um, and that, you know, he really knew his stuff. Uh, it was just in, it really inspiring to talk to him, for mm-hmm. sure. Cool. First time you met him? First time I met him, yeah, I never met him before. I've only met him once myself. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, I always, uh, one thing I always remember about Bob Leach is uh, when you coming up, I remember I had something either that was exciting me or upsetting me, and I was all fired up, and I remember Bob came up to me and said, hey, Tad, calm down, and I was like, Damn, Bob Leach told me to calm down. <laughs> it's like he was Mister Intensity, mm-hmm. and I was like, I maybe have been going over the top there. So sounds like somebody I'd get along with. <laughs> he like, for people who don't know Bob, um, to me, like, I'm sure that he probably said a lot of the same things that other other of the leadership said, right? Because mm-hmm. there's a lot of consistent themes. But Bob is like, he's like an old. I don't want to say he's old, but like he's a he's like a grizzly, you know, uh, Mississippi Delta blues singer. Like he can say the same thing with like this intensity and this emotional gravitas, and it just kind of has like this ooh, to it, you know, this is weight, <laughs> this gravity, and it's just it's amazing to watch. Mm-hmm. Soulful. Yeah. What's everybody's plans for uh, Christmas vacation? Italian food. Lots mm-hmm. of Italian food. Seven fishes. Ugh. Oh, I can't wait. Ugh. What is the seven fishes? Half of them are disgusting. <laughs> Just fishes. It doesn't have to be. Sardines and uh, no. oily mackerel. And no, no, tripe. no. It could be any fishes. And it, has to be, it doesn't have to be seven either. It just has to be an odd number. Goldfishes? People usually could cheat and use shrimp could too, be, right? Could they, be. They count Shrimps shrimp. counts. It just has to be any fish, uh, but an odd number. Oh, calamari. Mm-hmm. Got to be in there, calamari. Be, yeah. mm-hmm. We've had yeah. Should be. We've had you know, cod. We've had all types of fishes. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know be. what we're doing. We're yeah. not doing much, that's for sure. And Carolyn? You know, <laughs> I, I've yes. done, I have done that a few times. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know if we're doing that or not yet this year. I haven't, got, I haven't gotten the call out. I don't know. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Honestly, it kind of depends on the weather. <laughs> Are you going to Coventry? Well, the weather outside is... Never. Um, no, uh, uh, my friend Jeff uh, and his uh, very musical family do it out in uh, Canterbury and get dragged along sometimes. Is it the same Jeff from college? No, not the same beer, beer drinking Jeff. Two oh, different Jeffs. Okay. But they're both from college. I was going to say, we should be in, hopefully enjoying the house for the amount of decorations my wife put up. Same. I, oh I pulled Lord. the buckets out, but I, uh, you know, but we pulled out. Everything is out. Everything has been lit up. Our backyard, our front yard, our pathways, our, it's all like that. We actually might have uh, the kids in the neighborhood come over and do a little, make popcorn and go around there thing. But we aren't going anywhere we had been in the past, but... Uh, my daughter's moving out of her apartment, so uh, we'll probably be recovering from that. Is probably what we're going to be doing. 
So you guys like the neighborhood light show? It's like the Griswolds. We are, like they but flick not. it on, and the power plant goes. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> boop, boop. Like, we yeah. are, but it's not to that level. We're, mm-hmm. we're just quiet street, but we're probably the brightest house. In the yeah, street. we have a couple mm-hmm. people do it. Uh, no, no blow ups. It's all like lights and structures. Old school. It's got to be old school. But um, you know. Uh, yeah, you know, it's a pretty it's a pretty good display. Speaking of old school, have you seen the ads for the new uh Christmas story movie? I've no, seen it. I've seen, seen it. it. What do you think? I've seen it. Um I, it was no. 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 It was not it was good. It was, it was not terrible. No, it wasn't. Like it's better than the uh, Christmas story sequels that they've had. Yeah. Mm. But uh they pulled it was off cool. Ralphie. All they, the uh, actors that were in the first one were except for the dad. Darren McGavin. Uh, the uh, mom the was different too. She the thing that blows my mind Everybody is how much Ralphie really. as an adult looks like Ralphie as a kid. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. It was a great. Kind of, it was a lot better than creepy. expected. Uh-huh. I thought but it was going to be terrible. Even Randy, Randy, yeah, is in the movie. Um, the other two guys, one that got his tongue stuck to the pole. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. flick, flick, or flick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Have we seen flick? <laughs> flick who? Um, it is my best, my favorite. I had a little problem with this at, at Thanksgiving, but Christmas, what do you eat? Joe's got the seven fishes. On Christmas? Is there any traditions? What are you guys eating for Thanksgiving, for Christmas? Well, Christmas, yeah, that's Christmas Eve for me. Christmas Day is yeah. the roast beef, the, mm. the uh, roast pasta, too. Roast, roast beef? Roast beef, the lasagna. We're yeah. actually having prime rib this year because nice. my buddy Jeff. Which mm. one? Which one? The second one. Uh, his uh, brother-in-law is a restaurateur and has a, a line on really great prime rib this year. He's like, Absolutely. so I'm buying one. He's like, but like, it's a lot. You split it with me. I'm like, yep. So Absolutely. we're doing that. My neighbor Absolutely. did that buying the pig thing and then they mm-hmm. cut it all up. Yeah. Did oh, you yeah. hear about this? Pig? You buy a whole pig at a farm yeah. and they, that's where they get to pick them out. I, that would be weird. Oh, growing like up. that one. Yeah. Kill that one. No, that's tar- people do it all the time. All right, well, maybe no, growing, cows, up, growing up, we used to not get for like, nothing. But there's an entire South Park episode where Cartman does exactly that. Like they go, like it's like a, <laughs> like it's a pita kind of thing, and he's like, "Oh, look, there's a lamb. I'll take that one." Do we get free samples? It's pretty funny. Uh, I get. Uh, yeah, we used to growing up. We used to get like a half a cow and split it with other families. Yeah. What are you doing? I know. I don't know until I f- figure it out too. But uh, it'll probably be well. Last year. My wife and daughter just came to me and said, you know something? Can we have ribs mm. for Thanksgiving? And I was like, yeah. Say Turkey it. ribs? <laughs> say it in the recording. <laughs> no, we have this unplaced called Smoking Buttheads, and they make, it's Texas Award, wait, what, wait, Awarding what's the name? Smoking Buttheads. It's uh, ridiculous ribs. Mm. And, uh, yeah, so we, uh, so I bought enough for, like, 20 so it was the three of us because, you know, Christmas vacation lasts a long time. <laughs> you know, you put it out. But I don't know. We do. I don't know. We'll probably do like a turkey. Do they sell T-shirts Maybe. at this restaurant? Maybe. Not. Uh, yeah, they do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Smoking buttheads. Yeah. They have something called the uh, their tornado. It's a uh, it's kind of like the jalapeno popper, but it's the um, uh, what's the other green pepper that's out there that. Um, habanero? No, no, the other one. But uh, the other one. But it's stuffed okay. with barbecue. And the cream cheese, but then it's wrap of like smoked bacon. Sounds and like a heart attack. Things. They're ridiculous. Is this a place you and Sean? Yeah, we brought you too, Tom. That place is great. Yes, uh-huh. we brought you too, Tom. And we made you, we got the tornado for you too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, what was the green pepper? Absolutely. Tom? I don't remember. I just remember enjoying it Ranchero. and being in a lot of pain afterwards because I ate too much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sounds about right uh-huh. for you. But I don't know. No, I had, I had a problem at Thanksgiving when people were saying, oh, I, oh, I don't like turkey. It doesn't have leftovers. The turkey, it's got to be ham. And I'm like, you're. I, I went as far as calling them communists <laughs> because I'm like, then you didn't cook the turkey right. Yeah. You, you didn't cook the turkey. And who doesn't like have turkey enough. leftovers? I yeah, love, that's I the best. Turkey turkey Absolutely. Yeah. There's, I don't think there's anything more iconic for leftovers. I would yeah. Thanksgiving turkey. If Turkey's, I, like turkey turkey, turkey stuffing oh. cranberry sandwich. If you that's got, why you yeah, do it. I was yeah. say, two days later, we're still that's having a turkey. That's why you do it. And it's, uh, For me, it should be once a month. Turkey tetrazzini, yeah. turkey soup, you know. <laughs> they used to be the turkey only way omelets. Extended family. Oh, wait, now I remember why I don't like turkey. gumbo. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Well, that's part of the seven fishes. Shrimps. You only get through fishes one through four on the actual day. Yeah. And then the, the intervening days afterwards are for the other seven. Well, Bubba from Bubba Gum Shrimp, they, yeah. they had no problem. With good ham's good, too. Uh, a nice ham is Yeah, ham's good. It's good on holiday, too. Yeah, We might have ham. Depends. Ham. Might have both. My mom cooks a lot for like eight people. It's her love language, Joe. It really is. 
I'll make it a lamb. <laughs> Mine is eating, so. She still make homemade bread, too? Yep. Oh, God. Homemade bread. I can only imagine. So it's been 40 years with HRP. We've all been here for kind of various amounts of time. Do we have uh, favorite moments or times from our time here? Oh, God. Because I think I'll go first, too, so I'll give you each some time to think about this. But my favorite has got to be the first Christmas party that I ever went to at HRP. Um, it was at, I think it was called the Society Room in Hartford. Yeah. It was that a was bank a, building. That was a good oh, wow, one. Yeah. yeah, that was a great one. Excellent venue. People were. That was the one where Andy White was breakdancing, right? Yes. I, yeah, I think so. It was a great time, for sure. And such a cool venue. Okay, who's next up? Your favorite what, moment. Favorite moment? I'm yeah. just going to say. Um, it's, it's got to, but it's got to be something fun. It can't just be like, a, I was so proud of this moment, or we, oh. wow, we really hit our third quarter goals in this one. Oh, no, no. Oh, for me, it's yeah, the, uh, I know. For me, it's the, uh, the road trips where you go on with yeah. teams. I mean, you know, two team person, one team person. I mean, it was legendary mm-hmm. St. Patty's Day's trip I always used to make with uh, the civil people uh, doing Navy work and doing that but tell me about a specific one which one comes to mind first when you think about that oh geez we were at the uh at the cape doing uh work at like south weymouth or, or one of those things frank soba was there roy cavanaugh was there danny white was there and uh we just would always find ourselves out of town on saint patty's day probably wasn't a good group to be out of town on saint patty's day <laughs> together you guys ended and, up uh, going every just day. you know and you know most of course you're out in the cape there and then it's pretty much closed but uh we just had this like incredible meals and our cocktails and our grain marnier and uh it went into the evening and uh just just had a freaking blast just hanging out with each other and then begging uh some some of the party not to call their wives uh after one or two in the morning and then the story continued from there but uh no nah, just those road trips were unbelievable and seeing stuff doing stuff taking advantage of the areas you're with and uh mm-hmm. You know that's that's the culture and the the bonding you have with people because uh, you know you're in a smelly plant chasing something yep. down helping somebody you smell like crap you go back you take showers and uh, and then you go out and have the thing actually I just told a story with MJ was uh, we talked about Terry Chapman okay. so Terry was a phenomenal uh, field services guy just always got it done worked on systems and stuff so. Um, these Navy jobs were huge. Yeah. Um, you know, geez, like 50 wells, stripper systems, all that. And you needed like a crew of four or five people. Um, so Terry would come down. It was so hot. You started at six in the morning. You killed yourself, worked through lunch. You'd get your, like your lunch that day, pack coolers. And, um, but they wanted you off base at like three 30. Well, mm-hmm. we would do that, but then we were in Pensacola. So we'd go to the white sandy beaches mm. and go swimming. And Terry was just hilarious. He'd be out there in the middle of the bay doing the backstroke, spitting up water. But we had this whole thing where he would go back and go, oh, my God, that job was terrible. The mosquitoes were like baseballs and like this. So he could keep on rolling back in there every July. So we had this whole thing <laughs> going. Move, it was great. Move. Oh, it was fantastic. And uh uh, and then, uh, you know, we do that in January. So, but it was, it was cool. We did, we had a, we had a lot of fun, uh, doing that. Uh, and he was like, yeah, he was, he was so good. Taught a lot of the young guys, uh, you know, how to be, how to be field service guys. And he would always, uh, come forward. Yeah. Yeah. It was good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Joe, what do you got? You know, the times that I've had the most fun were like the three twelves that went like way <laughs> yeah. too long. Yeah. You know, and I got to text my wife at like eight o'clock and I'm like, I'm on my way. And then, and then at nine o'clock I text her, I'm still coming. I haven't left yet. You know, those, those have always been really fun and always a different mix of people that were in those, those long three twelves. So those are the ones that I, I, one of my favorite moments here. I think it was a Christmas party, but do you remember, um, See, this is what I'm talking about. When this we stuff. set up the, the big card table outside the copy room, played president. Was it right? Yeah, yeah, right yeah, outside. Yeah, yes, yeah, that yes, was a great yes, time. That, that went was on a good one. Ever. That one, a little too long. You could play that game for days. My, my kids play it now. Yeah. We call it presidents. We, we call, call presidents. it presidents. call it call uh, presidents on the podcast. Too. Yes, good, good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but my kids love it. We have to play it every time my brothers come over. Mm-hmm. It's like a must. So simple, so much. Well, yes, fun. that was those. Those are the ones that I'm talking about. Yeah, those events that just keep going mm-hmm. and keep going. <laughs> yeah. Dan, what do you got? I have so many, mm-hmm. and I don't know, I, like so many, lots of snippets. 
Like it's not, there's not necessarily one particular event. I think that lives above all over others, but there are lots of little moments that just awesome them unto themselves. So I'm just sitting here talking about Frank Sova. I'm remembering when Marilee B.B. Kostrin, who was an engineer who used to work here because Frank was an interesting individual, but she took a dead deer leg from the woods and put it in, put it in his, uh, his surveying closet from here. Oh, I never like outside in Plainville. Yeah. Oh, and he got on the PA system. And I think Bubba, who's over there filming, still has this audio somewhere, but it gets on the PA system and says, Dot, whoever put the goddamn deer leg in the in the survey closet? And yeah, <laughs> just, it was just funny. Oh, funny. exactly. That and um, playing uh, the holiday Thanksgiving football game, which we don't do anymore, but beer that, used, now. that mm-hmm. used to be, you know, beer punks, child's play. That used to be a thing. Mark Posidento, you know, playing in the P and HRP, getting out and like he was a, a rather portly, out of shape <laughs> guy at that point in his life. But he would get on the line and his whole move, whoever was lined up off opposite of him, was to give him nipple twisters right at the hike. And some of us would come back with giant purple marks on our chest because he would just literally like a like a crab like latch onto you and just twist until like you would cry sounds like my favorite moments those that was awesome um <laughs> so much so much fun and a uh i don't remember what christmas party it was it was a long time ago but it was at the uh farmington club where the horse where the horse barns are and i remember walt gankar's literally a former ceo <laughs> mm-hmm. laying on top of the bar on his back and people pouring t- tequila shots in his mouth like literally laying on the bar like coyote ugly like laying on the bar <laughs> I, I i have like a thousand of those kind of memories you know just yeah. oh they're little, little things stupid, you yeah. know that were just yeah ridiculous and iconic all at the same time mm-hmm. oh you've been yeah. here this long too you see people like in a meeting and all of a sudden you just start like giggling because it's just like eh, i remember yeah. doing that with them and or, honestly uh, i have another one and i wasn't even there and this is a more recent one but like the video of Sean Malin doing the dental floss dance move at that hockey game up there, yeah. every time I see that, it makes me laugh to crying every time I see it. And I wasn't even there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, yeah. No. It's all. It's like the road trips and the excursions and stuff that you go on and uh, having the extra day. The uh, the uh, bottomless, the endless tap at the. Uh, uh, Stro Brewery in Pennsylvania. They actually um, had uh, had a tap open till five five p.m. every night for the uh, for the whole town to have a beer uh, before on the way home. So we used to do uh, PSM events up there in St. Mary's, Pennsylvania. Finish up early, and on the way back, we'd stop off at the brewery, and they had a mug, and you just had to clean your own mug after yourself, <laughs> and do all that. So finding those spots when you're out there doing the work, and uh, you know doing that type of thing, going with certain people and you track down those diner drive-ins and dives when you're doing audits and you, you're out there for three days in the middle of Indiana. You're like, what the hell are we going to do now? So mm-hmm. just different There's stuff like that. Another party one. This was, uh, this was not that long ago. It was probably six, six, seven years ago when, um, it was the, it was the Mike Peck and, uh, Deb, uh, uh, Debbie, uh, D'Amico retirement party, Christmas party when Mark and everybody was there. And, um, <laughs> dad's already shaking his head cause there's so many stories from <laughs> oh, that it one. Just, it was, but, it was endless. But the one that I, that I, so this party, there was a lot of things that happened at that party. That one, mm-hmm. there's a lot of, uh, infamous HRP parties. That one's from like an organized, not like a free for all party, but like from an organized party perspective, that one's gotta be in the top five. Mm. of the craziest yeah Mm -hmm. um but there was this one moment where you know for anybody who's listening to this who don't know these personalities but the the ceo of the time uh his name was andy white he couldn't be there and andy just loved to talk in front of a crowd and uh fancied himself like this motivational speaker and he would come up with these speeches that it's almost impossible to describe them because they were so complicated and 
obtuse. Like you never really knew like where he was going, you know, and there are lots of like jokes around the company about some of those speeches. But this one in particular was fantastic because he couldn't be there. So he wrote this whole speech and he made this poor fine gentleman named Steve Brown stand in his stay. And, and when it, I think it was, I think it was the speech that he made for, for Deb, for Debbie D'Amico when she mm-hmm. was, it was her retirement speech. And Steve had all these papers and he got up and he basically had to read Andy's speech. And as he was reading the speech, like he couldn't make heads or tails of what was they were talking about canoeing down mountains and like just all this crazy stuff. And I just wish that somewhere somebody had like for like now doing what we do. Yeah. If that had been filmed, <laughs> That was the Christmas that, party to film. That <laughs> that speech alone was Steve like flipping the papers and like, I, I I don't know I don't know it's right double-sided. canoe and mountain <laughs> and the river down the mountain and the canoe and he's like I, I don't know and then he would like try to it, it was a, it was like an SNL like parody like <laughs> in real life it was it was fantastically funny it really was. Mm-hmm. Were you there for that one? You were there for that. I don't think so. Party, but five, Except the Farmington Marriott, I five years think. Ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, no, that was it. Wasn't the Marriott? It oh. was um, in West Hartford. Oh, the mm-hmm. oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that the that blue nice place the, too. The blue diamond or something. Yeah, that was <laughs> a, no, yeah. that is so not it. Yeah, something like that. The Diamond Hotel or something. Mm. Yeah, that was a nice that place. Okay, well, folks, that's gonna do it for us. Uh, we could keep going, but. Uh, It's time to get ready for 2023. So thank you all for joining us on this episode. Have a great uh, New Year's, and we will see you in the new year. Bye, everybody. Bye. Ciao.